In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit as we begin the month of May with our outdoor masses at both border town parishes. We still continue to offer these online services for those who wish to stay at home once again. As long as the bishop's dispensation is in place, we will continue to serve you this way because we just want you to know that we very much care about your needs and we want to take care of you. As we continue to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us open our hearts to God's presence as we call to mind our sins. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Santo Dios, Santo Poderoso, Santo Immortal, ten piedad de nosotros, Christe Elehison, Christe Elehison. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie Elehison, Kyrie Elehison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We, pray, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken to him, how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem, and he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. When the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on the way to Tarsus. The church throughout all of Judea, Galilee, and Samaria were at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord, and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear the Lord. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live forever. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall thou bow down before him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. To him alone shall bow down all who sleep on the earth. Before him shall bend all who go down in the dust. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. To him my soul shall live, my descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. 
I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. A reading from the first letter of John. Children, let us love not in word and speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he has commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him, and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the Spirit he gave us. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes, so it bears more fruit. You already are pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me, as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me... You can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you like to eat plums? When I was growing up on our little three-acre farm in Sandwich, Illinois, in the corner of Gledion County Line Road, one mile south of the Sandwich Fairgrounds, we used to raise all kinds of trees on the property. My father uh, planted somewhere in the vicinity of 200 trees and vines because he just loved to plant. There is a bank on the property now and the uh, trees that my father planted on the perimeter of the campus are still there to protect the buildings from the elements. But my father used to grow fig trees and grape vines and blueberries and raspberries and all kinds of different things just because he loved to grow. And every fall we would can all our fruits and our vegetables and our berries and make jellies so that during the winter we would be able to sustain ourselves and give out as gifts that which we had produced during the summer. During that time, we had one particular plum tree that was so bountiful that my father hesitated about actually allowing the trees to be trimmed. In fact, uh, the tree, the way it was situated, was growing so big that it actually had two branches split off from the trunk, and the branches were getting overloaded with fresh, ripe, juicy plums. My father was very hesitant in cutting the branches because the plums were so good and so plentiful that the plum jam and the plum cobbler and the plum plum that we were producing was really just too good to pass up. Eventually, my father paid the price by not trimming the tree because one summer, during a storm, a bolt of lightning split the tree in two and both branches fell to the ground. We immediately picked up all the plums that we could from that wonderfully ripened tree, but we also realized that because we did not take care of it properly, 
after that year, we would have plums no more. Now, I've told the communities which I serve, whenever I begin a new ministry, whenever we begin a new ministry, it's like planting a tree in a garden. You have to let the tree grow. You have to let it go wild. You have to let it blossom and produce fruit. And then after a while, after the tree has established itself, it is then we form it and we mold it and we take care of it and we make sure it doesn't get out of control. Every ministry needs to be like that. Like a child growing up, you want to nurture and form the child, but you also want to have the child grow and you want the child to persevere. We do the same thing with our fruit trees. We do the same thing with our children. We certainly should be doing the same thing with our church to let the church grow, to let people, to invite people in, and then to make sure that the tree, the church, the bride of Christ is well formed and is well developed. It's my responsibility to be a leader of these communities by teaching properly the tenets of the church, the sacred tradition, the sacred scripture, is formed by the magisterium or the teaching body of the church, specifically the bishops. So when people come to me and they say to me, Father, what is the opinion of the church on this subject or this, whether it be abortion or same-sex marriages, whatever it is, they have not come to hear my opinion. If you want my opinion on whether I like Fruit Loops or Cheerios, that's fine. If you want my opinion about politics, well, I'm not big into politics. If you want to hear what the church has to say about certain subjects, it is not my responsibility to tell you what I think. It is my responsibility to tell you what the church teaches. And if you ask me a direct correct question, I am required to give a direct answer. The answer is we love everyone. We are a welcoming, uh, inclusive church that also has parameters under which we live. And we are obligated by those parameters to make sure we tell people that if we want to get to heaven, that God has established the Ten Commandments, the precepts of the church, the scripture, the tradition, to help guide us and form us and develop us so that we live correctly. That is why we have these tools at our disposal. That is why the catechism was promulgated, so that we had a book that would teach us and guide us and direct us on some of the basic things that we need to know. Every tree needs to be pruned. Every child needs to be raised properly. Every marriage needs to be well formed. Every church needs good direction. This is what I try to teach my university students. How do we as well formed Christians, how are we taught to live? If I'm teaching them incorrectly, then I am teaching them an error and that is on me. If they don't know the teachings of the church, then we need to instruct them properly. But if they know, and if they choose to disregard them, then that is something to which they have to answer to God. My responsibility is to teach. My responsibility is to love. My responsibility is not to judge. That is up to God. But if I am doing this right, I am making sure that we are forming our Christians under my care, that they are following the ways of God. Not the ways of me, not what I think, but what God wants us to do to live. Jesus tells us that he is the vine, we are the branches, the Father is the vine grower. If we want this tree to survive, then we need to make sure we follow and get nourished by the vine grower, by the vine itself. Otherwise, we become withered, we fall away, and then we die. We die spiritually. We need to be nourished by our Lord by coming to Mass, listening to the Word, receiving the sacrament, and then going forth to do what God asks us to do for the sake of our souls and the souls that we meet. May we be good stewards. May we be good branches. May we understand what God is asking us to do and how God wants us to be formed. Let us be formed well as we offer this branch, this love, this welcome, to the people that we meet. This is our prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The first deacons bore witness to Christ by serving the community of faith. Let us also take part in mutual service to one another. For those baptized this year, for all the baptized in the world, that Christ's risen glory be our constant inspiration and joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders and citizens of powerful countries, that their commitment to peace and justice inspire others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who may be considering ending a life unjustly through war, abortion, execution, homicide, suicide, or any other type of abuse, that they begin to cherish God's gift of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people, especially those most in need, that they find true support in those who love them, and accept God's call to a full and happy life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For everyone in this local church that we show forth God's love in word and in deed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they find God's love in the hands of their caregivers, especially today, we pray for those on our parish's sick list and certainly for our two uh, parish secretaries who are recovering from their respective illnesses at this time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may find the promise of eternal life. On uh, Monday of this last week, I celebrated two funerals, one for Chuck Etchley over in Joliet and one for Robert Bossy in Moments, Illinois. We certainly want to pray for them and all of our beloved deceased. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions offered this last week that they and their families be embraced by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, we thank you for the gifts of faith. Listen to the petitions we present to you for those in need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable. To God the Almighty Father, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who have by the wonderful exchange effected in the sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a new order is cast down and renewed, and an integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anne, St. Patrick, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather yourself, all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. amen. 
previous command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to the newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So on this particular weekend, we are celebrating First Communions over at St. Patrick's Catholic Church. But John Raymer and the gang have done a wonderful job getting the kids ready for the sacrament, as has Kim Emerson, who is going to offer the same sacrament the following weekend for the kids of St. Anne's. Over at Pat's, we had decided that on Saturday nights, we will celebrate our uh, liturgies indoors, and on Sundays, weather permitting, we go outside. At St. Anne's Church, we will celebrate indoors on the first Sunday of every month, and the rest of the month we will go outdoors on Sundays, and certainly on Wednesday nights at 5 p.m. We are more than happy to do the same thing. Communities have been growing, and our collections are doing fine. Once again, we're still offering the opportunity for pew donations to help us out, $2,500 to dedicate a pew to a loved one. If you can help us at a million dollars to have one of our uh, parish halls named after a loved one, that would solve a lot of problems at both of our parishes. Please consider whatever you can do to help us out. And if you can't help that way, certainly your service to the parish would be appreciated. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. I invite you now to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and adoption. May God give you gladness by his blessings. Amen. May he who by redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to the eternal inheritance. Amen. May you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith be living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God.